Hey guys, it's Sandra. Welcome back to the channel. So guys, thank you for following the blog and the YouTube. It's been amazing. Um, I'm a week into the new year and already up to 20 subscribers. That is amazing. But let's dive in. Um, so guys, this is going to be a bit of a revisit of a topic that I just can't seem to get out of my head. And so, and it's the rights and responsibilities of a person with a disability. Um, we, Australia is actually a signatory to the UN Convention of Human Rights. It's taken a while, but we are a signatory. And so that also includes the UN Convention on Rights of a Person with a Disability. And I didn't actually realise until I was researching a blog post called I Had to Have These Conversations and it just stuns me that it took Australia this long but again I see that for all the rights we have we also have responsibilities and so this is a discussion that we're seeing playing out very publicly in Canada with the Ontario College of psychologists versus Dr. Jordan Peterson and what's happening around his clinical license and media retraining and I've just finished watching his daughter's podcast, Michaela Peterson's podcast, would they lay it all out and say well make up your own mind. Uh, my mind is that it's actually politically motivated. I am quite open on this channel about that I do see a counsellor and she is a wonderful, kind-hearted being. But my responsibility to her is to tell the truth, to work with her, and to accept that freedom of speech is not the same as freedom of consequences. If I put a blog post up where I've got my information wrong, I better be prepared to either retract the correct the information and make an apology. However, to prevent that, I do my homework before sitting down and watching record, pressing record. But this freedom of speech is really quite interesting in that we here seem to have forgotten that freedom of speech is not freedom of consequences. Um, I do not agree at all with what's happening with Dr. Jordan Peterson. Um, let me say that I don't agree with all of his views, but the millions of people that he has helped, um, that the people that he has helped through his books, his lectures, being a clinical psychologist, we can see that there is a political motivation behind it. And I just wanted to sit down and go, well, where does my motivation come to start on YouTube and the blog? And so it was born out of a fight. And that fight was for me to get the NDIS care that I currently received. And I am seeing more and more and more that for higher functioning clients, and a, just a reminder to my American viewers, higher functioning in Australia is not considered an offensive term. So for people who are higher functioning under the NDIS, we seem to slip through the cracks. We seem to put up with bad support. And you can check out my videos on, I had to have these conversations, I've got a blog post. I've also got some new content up on the Patreon guys if you want to become a member starts at three dollars a month for behind the scenes outtakes and a newsletter so guys if you can go and check that one out if you can that'd be great and this is where I started to think the YouTube because I discovered that having a support worker wasn't all it was cracked up to be there was a lot of organisation that went into it. Uh, making sure people turned up on time, making sure agencies had actually put in the invoices, making sure that 
people turned up that I might have to cancel an event because I didn't cancel in time for support. And then um, my support agency changed and I started accepting very, very, very poor support. And I started blogging about it. And it started resonating with people about what they could do. And so I thought, I can start to decode the NDIS. But as I said in my video about my goals for the new year, I'm going to widen the topic and talk about topics that are a lot broader. And one thing that this is poor support. And so we as a society really need to sit down and define what a support worker is. So guys, to that end, I'm going to put it out to you guys to so put it in the comments. I'll put my email down there as well, my Gmail. And email me your experiences with a support worker. So what is a support worker? Um, and I've said at the past that the, I know that the answers are going to be as diverse as Matt Walsh going to a Pride Parade and asking what is a woman. But we need to define as a society what a support worker is and does and the difference between a support worker and a carer. Are they the same? Are they just synonyms? What qualifications do they have? And what is socially unacceptable and socially acceptable for a support worker to do and to not do? So these are some questions and topics that I'm going to explore. Drop it in the comments below guys and this video I'm honestly not sure if it'll see the light of day guys because it is a bit ranty, it does have some names mentioned in it but guys I think we need to have this discussion because one thing that really struck me in the podcast that Dr. Jordan Peterson was talking about was that people saying silent. And I'm not a person who wants to stay silent. I want to be able to further causes and to take up space. I'm not going to demand a seat at the table where I'm not invited but I'm certainly going to take up space and get people to question their beliefs, question what they think about disability, to question what they know about hidden disabilities, what they know about chronic illnesses, versus what the lived reality actually is. And that's something that I've found I'm really passionate about. Since being diagnosed with a chronic illness, since I've had family members diagnosed with a chronic illness, um, the lack of education from medical professionals about the cause of your illness, the lack of understanding of support workers about what a chronic illness is, and the lack of empathy long term for your situation. Um, and this can be really hard to deal with. And when you've had a really hard day, the last thing you need is to have to be in a position to educate a support worker on your needs time and time and time and time again. And so this is where we need to have a discussion about disability, chronic illness, and how it affects people and how their under supporting of higher functioning people to achieve their goals and if they have the goal of running a business they will contribute to taxes and this is a major component that people forget about in the NDIS that when you start supporting higher functioning people they can become economically contributing people to society so guys um, if you can Please like, share and subscribe and 
guys if you can follow the blog and share it that'd be awesome guys